Hello and welcome back. Today we're working again on Jolie Monheim's Ophelia's Mother Image. Today we're going to start by creating a new file. So we're going to go to the File menu and we're going to click New. Um, and I'm going to be working at um, an image height of 1280. Um, the actual original image is considerably larger than this, but for the sake of keeping uh, my computer's memory running smoothly while we're recording, I'm going to work on a slightly smaller file size. So this is a quarter of the file size of the original, but um, 960 by 1280 in this case. I'm going to press OK on that. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to press F to go full screen. And then I'm going to place the images that we've been working on. So I'm going to go to the File menu, and I'm going to choose Place. And I'm going to select the HDR file that we've been working on up till now, um, which, as you can see, is a PSD file. And it's going to come in with this sort of X mark on it. And what this is doing, if you go to the Layers palette, um, this has imported a new layer with the image that we've just pointed at, and it's imported it as a um, smart object. So if I drag that larger, I can just click on the corners and drag it. Um, it knows that it is a file from elsewhere. So if I now click on the Layers palette again, you can see it's got this little icon in the corner. That means it's a smart object. And uh, you can see the, the, uh, the highlighted um, uh, tooltip says Smart Object Thumbnail. Now, if I double-click on that, what that's going to do... I'll show you, is it's going to open this window that's going to say, right, after editing the contents, choose File, Save to commit the two changes. These changes will be reflected upon returning to the file that we're working on, which is Untitled 1. So if I press OK, that's now going to open up the, the file that we've just placed. And if I was to do something silly like, let's just say, uh, make a new, a new layer, and I'm just going to draw a big X in the middle of the layer. There we go. And I'm going to close that, and it's going to say, do you want to save it? Yes. And it's going to take us back to our untitled image. And as you can see, this layer that we've placed has now got that big X on it. This is the, the joy of smart objects. When the smart object that you've placed um, spots that the underlying thing that you placed in there has changed, then it'll update this file as well. So it's actually a link to the, um, to the other file. So if I double-click that again, and we'll go back and we'll just trash that X layer... And uh, we can close that and say File, Close. Yes, we do want to save that change. And we're back to our nice um, volcanic cloud in Hawaii image. Um, now, uh, something else that I forgot to mention. I'm just going to go back into that volcanic cloud. Um, I have also added here a couple of more layers on top of what we, we worked with. When we did the HDR, that was the image that we came out with. Um, and coming back into uh, Photoshop with it, what we've done is added the hue saturation layer, which um, if I turn that off and on, you can see it dims it down. If I just double click on that layer, we'll have a look at the, the dialog box just to see what, what's being what's going on here, in here. Uh, we've desaturated the reds quite a bit. Uh, that's an awful lot, actually, 43. And we've desaturated the yellows by a little and all that's doing is taking out some of that RNG cast so we'll do that and then we've got another layer here a curves layer with nothing at all in any of the uh, the channels so nothing in the red channel nothing in the green channel nothing in the blue channel and nothing in the overall RGB channel um, all that is is a screen layer and if you remember from our drop down blending modes um, a screen layer will lighten the whole image so there we go, that's um, our curves layer with an opacity, not a fill, an opacity of 58. Um, there we go, an opacity of 58. Um, and that will brighten the the whole layer up. So those are just a couple of little tweaks we've done to our HDR background image in order to make it uh, the image that we want to work with when we start putting it behind the, um, the image of, of the two ladies for the Ophelia's mother image. So I'm going to close that layers down and I'm going to file close and yes I do want to save that and we'll get back to our um, our new image that we're working on here now we've got a, a background layer that we don't really need so if I just go into my layers palette I can drag and drop that background into the trash there and now we're ready to place the, um, the pictures of the ladies over the top of this so our next step is once again to go to the file menu and once again to choose place. And this time we're going to choose angandmandy.tiff, which is the file that we've been working on before. 
Um, you'll recognise this from our earlier work. And once again, um, it's coming with as X because once again we've done a place which is going to make this a smart object. Uh, now in this case I want to resize it and so I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard and that is going to transform without changing the ratio of the height to the width. If I let go of the shift key, the height and width can change and we can get the ratios of the height and width wrong. Um, if you hold down the shift key, it snaps it back to uh, being in the right ratio. So we want it about that sort of size. Now if I just press enter there, um, the lovely thing about these smart objects being imported this way is that I can keep resizing these and keep resizing these. We are not losing or or uh, uh, destroying any data by resizing it in this way because what we're doing is resizing a smart object. We're not stretching and, and resampling pixels here. We're just saying this, this file over here, we're referring to this file over here and we are um, making it come in at a different size. So it's a completely non-destructive operation to resize that. And because that, I can now, uh, having resized it, I can drag my opacity down just so I can see the image through the background. Um, and this will allow me just to, to place this layer a little more precisely where I want it. So, um, whoops, I'm going to just grab my Move tool and just drag it a little bit. Um, it needs a bit of resizing, so I'm going to go to the Edit menu and Free Transform, which you can get to by Control t uh, Once again, holding down the Shift key. And I'm just avoiding these bits of uh, plant over here on the right. There's some trees on the right there. And um, I like the way this particular line of cloud here um, sort of reflects the shape of the uh, of the lady lying on her back, maybe the shape of the face just a little bit. So that's a nice little bit of echoing there. Um, I think we'll keep that in. And I think we'll just... I think that's, that's pretty good. I'm going to... I'm not going to mess with that too much, I don't think. I think I'll just make sure that that line's still in there. So we're not touching the trees. That's all pretty good. So, yep. And um, to finish the free transform, we just press the Enter key. Um, so we've now got our image placed roughly where we want it. I can go back to my layers palette and I can just put the opacity back up to 100%. And uh, so we've now got that place where we want, but obviously it's completely obscuring the background. So our next step is going to be to take out some of the background so we can see through. So the way we're going to do that is to add a layer mask to our Ang and Mandy layer, which is going to be, uh, we're going to do that by uh, choosing our Ang and Mandy layer in our layers palette. And we're going to click the layer mask icon, which is down here at the bottom of the, uh, the layers palette. And we can see that creates this little layer mask next to our image. Um, and we can click on either of those to edit the one we want. Look, uh, we want to edit the layer mask itself. So with the layer mask selected, I'm now going to grab my graphics tablet. I've been working with a, a mouse up till now. Um, but now we're going to start doing a little bit of drawing with hand drawing. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that I've got a little bit more control. And with black and white selected, if you haven't got black and white selected, you can hit this little icon down here. Um, or you can press the D key on your keyboard, that will choose black and white. And remember the X key on your keyboard will alternate black and white, uh, will alternate the foreground and background colours. So uh, I'm going to choose the brush tool by pressing B. And as usual, I'm using a brush that is, um, it's a, a soft edge brush and it's pressure sensitive so that the harder I press, the darker the um, the colour I'm painting with. So in this case I'm going to be painting with black on the layer mask and if I paint with black on the layer mask it starts to reveal through what we're, the, reveal what's behind. So um, in this case we're revealing the clouds and I'm just going to block out some of the the main water areas from here. Now we don't need to be too precise here and I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to take quite a lot of the hair out because we're going to do something else in a minute that's going to bring a lot of this detail back. Uh, Jolene has a wonderful technique for building some depth in these two characters. So I'm just going to roughly work around the edge of these characters here and just take out the majority of the blue. If Where I do leave halos, I want them to be as subtle as I can. And when I say halos, I mean these sort of blue glows, I guess, around the edge of the, the faces and stuff. Um, don't make them too sharp. Um, we don't really want them drawing the, the viewer's attention any more than they absolutely have to. So um, 
and obviously remember also that eyes are drawn to faces and they're drawn to the brightest parts of the image and in this case uh, this face here has got a lot of light on it it's far and away one of the brightest parts of the image so we need to be particularly careful around there with the halos we need to make sure that that in that uh, that part of the image um, it it's as tidy as we can make it Tidy in this respect does not mean pixel perfect with our mask. What it means is where we're not pixel perfect, we're subtle. So that, that you can see I've left a little bit of a halo around the face, but it goes out and it's graduated and it's not, it's not a hard edge. Um, our eyes are not only drawn to brightness, they're also drawn to strong contrast. And if you make a very hard edge, you can sometimes make it very obvious that there's, that there's a gradient there by making it too sharp a contrast, too, too sharp an edge. So, just working away some of the, the blue around the edges there, and we'll just... I don't want to spend forever on this, because your time and mine is precious, but I want to show you roughly how this is, how this is going to look, if we can get it right. And the other thing, of course, because we're doing this with a layer mask, if we've got something slightly wrong and later on it becomes clear that we made a mistake, we can come back and we can tweak it again later. So I'm just using the square bracket keys on my British keyboard. Um, leave it to, to you guys to figure out what the keys are on your keyboard if you're not in the UK or in America. But um, square bracket keys to change the size of the brush. Uh, just paint back a little bit of the detail on the knees there. I destroyed a little bit of leg there and a little bit of foot. And remember, we will be bringing some of this um, information back in the next step of this. So we don't want to be too precise. OK, that's probably a good place to um, just zoom in there and just... I can't help myself. When I see these things, I have to go and mess with them. I think attention to detail actually is one of those things that really sets sets you apart. If you do have that attention to detail, um, I'm not saying go mad with it, but you know that might very well be one of the things that that might make your images look particularly your own. So so go with your gut on these things. Right, that's a good place to leave that for the moment. So there we go. That that's we've basically blocked in our two characters over the top of the background. Now, switching back to the mouse very, mouse very briefly, the um, the next step is going to be what uh, Jolene called building depth. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to sort of add contrast to the two characters themselves. So um, going back to the layers palette, we're going to make a new layer, which is just a standard uh, bitmap layer, create a new layer there at the bottom of the layers palette. And we're going to fill it with black. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to press Control A to get the marching ants all the way around the entire image. Select all is Control A. Um, and then because we've got black as our foreground colour, we can do Alt-Delete or uh, Option-Delete on the Mac, and that will fill that layer entirely with black. And then we're going to just drag the opacity down to sort of 40-ish percent, somewhere like that. Um, because we don't want this to apply to the volcanic cloud layer as well, we just want it to apply to the... You can see that's darkening everything down. We just want that to apply to the the layer with Angamandion. So if I point my cursor at the line between the, the Angamandion layer and the uh, the darkening layer, the depth adding layer, and I hold down the Option or Alt key, you can see the cursor changes to these little uh, uh, two circles overlapping. So if I hold down the Option Alt key and click there, what that's done is it's made this layer above apply only to the layer below. And it shows you that by putting this little downward pointing arrow here. So if I turn that layer on and off now, you can see it's darkening just the Ang and Mandy layer. Um, so that's going to give us the beginnings of our contrast. Now, the next step of our contrast, I'm going to get just the highlights out of the Ang and Mandy layer. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to turn off the darkening layer and the clouds layer. And I'm going to salute, select our Ang and Mandy layer. And I'm going to do a keyboard shortcut that I haven't done in a while. Um, control Alt Option or Command Option, uh, sorry, Control Alt Shift or Command Option Shift N and then E. And that's going to copy our entire layer. Now I've just realized I've forgotten to do something. That's copied it with the layer mask intact. I didn't want that. So I'm going to delete what I've just created and I'm going to press Shift and turn off the layer mask I created on the Angamandi layer. And once again, 
um, Control Alt Shift N, Control Alt Shift E, and that's going to create a new layer and stamp the visible um, pixels into it. So if I was to just show you that one layer, I've turned everything off except that one layer, uh, and we don't need that to be. Um, let's drag that up to the top so that we just look at that one layer. Um, what that is is just a, a stamp of what was showing at the time. And the reason I've done that is I want to select the highlights out of it. And the way we select the highlights is um, Control alt and then the key to the left of the one key, uh, which on my keyboard is a back quote key, on an American keyboard is a tilde key, um, and it could be anything on, on other keyboards around the world. So it's the usually it's the key to the left of the one on your keyboard, um, Control alt or Command Option, and that key will get you the highlights. And you can see here, it's given us marching ants around the regions of the image that are the brightest regions. Um, so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to press Control C to copy them, and then I'm going to press Control V to paste them. And you can see that it's pasted them in, in just slightly the wrong place, but we, it does snap back into place if you just drag it left with the with the Move tool, which is the V key. So I've got my highlights there now. I can now delete that layer with a copy of the entire image in it. I don't need that. I just wanted to grab the highlights. And that's left us just with the highlights visible, which it's kind of hard to see here, but uh, perhaps you could just about see that. We've got the, the highlight along the arm, some highlights on the face, and some of the blue at the bottom here showing. So if I turn all the other layers back on, we've now got our volcanic cloud, and, and I need to turn back on that layer mask on the Anger Mandula. If you look, there's a red X through it. Remember, I shift-clicked on that layer mask. If I do so again, that turns back on the layer mask, and we're back to seeing the clouds through there again. Um, now, if you look at what this highlight layer I've chosen is doing, this is really quite neat. What it's doing is it's putting back some of the highlight detail that... Um, that we sort of toned down with our darkening layer, with our, our depth adding layer, and it's it's bringing back some of that detail on the face. And look what a wonderful thing it does to the hair. The hair suddenly just is is sort of merging into the clouds, and the the, the hair becomes clouds. It's a, it's a fascinating a fascinating uh, effect that it generates there. And I, I think we need it even stronger, really. So what I'm going to do is. That highlight layer, I'm going to drag onto the new layer icon at the bottom here to duplicate it. Um, and because we've now got two layers the same, I'm going to group those. I'm going to press Control G, which puts them into a group. And you can see that that's our highlights group there. And I'm just going to name my um, add depth layer there as well. Um, remember, it's always worth naming your layers so that when you come back later on, you do learn and you do improve these techniques as time goes by. And there will come a time when you want to go back to some of the images that you've worked on in the past and uh, maybe see if you can do an even better job at processing them again. So don't ever flatten your layers. Save your, save your images with, with uh, uh, the PSD uh, or TIFF, all with the layers intact. Don't flatten them. Um, and when you come back, you'll be able to see what these layers were for, what it was you were trying to achieve. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.